Hey everybody, Dr. Drake 63 here again today. I've got uh, something a little bit different today. We're going to unbox a new AR-15. This is something that uh, I've been mostly a, a builder now for a number of years. And uh, my very first AR-15 was a Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Optics Ready. And uh, that's long since gone. However, after doing a number of builds and uh, different, uh, different iterations, Final deal I couldn't pass up, as they say in The Godfather, an offer you can't refuse. So today we're going to talk about it, the Smith & Wesson M&P 15, and this is a police edition, which my understanding has either been discontinued or is in limited supply. So we're going to talk about it. Let's enjoy. I don't know about you guys, but nothing, nothing beats uh, the fun of unboxing a new firearm. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this one. This... Is the M&P 15 optics ready? No, this is a patrol rifle. Uh, this particular version is um, a 16 inch barrel. It's a one and nine twist. This was offered to law enforcement agencies for a very long time. Uh, it's got a detachable carry handle. It's got a 4140 barrel that is chambered in a 5.56. Why is that important? Because you don't want to be shooting 223, or I'm sorry, you don't want to be shooting 556 through a 223, whereas you can shoot 223 through a 556. It's got your standard front sight. Uh, nothing fancy on the furniture here. However, I would like to point out uh, the finish uh, on the uppers and lowers on these Smith & Wessons uh, have always impressed me. I like them quite a bit. So we're going to take a look at this. Um, what's amazing about this in 2017 is this is a, a rifle that's listed for almost $1,200. I haven't seen it anywhere cheaper than about eight. I picked this up under 600 bucks. As you can see, comes with that P Mag 30 round, which is okay. I'm a little bit more of a fan of uh, of the of the metal magazines. And, of course, your Smith & Wesson uh, Safety and Instruction Manual, which make sure you read at all times. Now, what makes this a law enforcement version of the Smith & Wesson rifle? Well, basically this. This particular rifle uh, has gone through uh, an additional quality check to make sure what's going out the door is indeed right and working. So... That's about the only difference from my understanding with this particular one uh, offered to law enforcement. It is a competitor of the Colt, uh, and um, <clears throat> a lot of people say it compares well. Uh, is it better than a Colt? Nah, I doubt it. We'll take a look inside and see what makes this tick. Okay. I pulled the... Uh, the bolt carrier group from uh, my 300 blackout build and I want to just show you real briefly what's different about this bolt carrier from the one that came in the Smith & Wesson which is on top if you notice this cutaway here leading up to the end of the bolt carrier it's even on top and the bottom what you see on a lot of AR-15 bolts that are not considered quote unquote full auto Comparing these two, you see that there's a little bit less material here. The reason for that is, is that these typically are not going to be shot in full auto. And uh, a little bit less material uh, required in the cycling. And so that's what we have. Now, is that done to save money? I don't know. But um, uh, a lot of guys will tell you they don't, uh, they don't roll with an AR-15 that doesn't have a full auto bolt carrier group. Um... To be honest, I've shot the heck out of my first M&P 15. It had this same bolt, and it really um, didn't uh, uh, perform any differently than uh, the, full, the full auto bolts that I used. What's most important to me, though, is it chrome line? The answer is yes. And is it properly staked? Properly staked gas key. We're going to zoom in so that you can see. Does that score cross into the bolt to prevent it from turning? And the answer is yes. Just like on this Spikes. Now, this is a Spikes full auto M16 bolt. Bolt group, I should say. 
And this is what came with the Smith & Wesson. I'm going to be hard pressed to notice a difference in performance. I don't think I'm going to replace that bolt group. Uh, but I would like to just go ahead and point out it doesn't hurt. It's not going to really change how the timing works with the buffer or any of that. But the most important thing, like I said, is it has properly staked gas keys and uh, the chamber where the bolt travels is chrome lined. So you either want chrome lined or you want, uh, you want a good coating uh, so that, that that helps because those are the areas that are going to be affected by fouling. So that's, that's one, one look at that internal. Now I've always been a fan of the classic M16 look. And I've also been a, a fan of the classic fixed front sight. When I had my prior Smith & Wesson, it had the gas block front sight. We found out that optics ready means that there's no optics on it at all. Now this is a flat top. It does have a, a carry handle, but this is removable. I'm not a big fan of these screws. It would really suit me well if uh, they found a smaller way to attach this, and I might look into that. But I do like that classic look. I do like to shoot open sights, as you can see, with my 300 Blackout SBR. That's what I like to do. Although, removing this and simply putting on an aim point or some kind of uh, red dot optic... Uh, it will it will uh, will do just dandy, and I've had uh, builds in that configuration. One of these days, I'm going to get the non-removable carry handle upper because I just love that look. So, what am I going to compare this to? It's five five six. It's obviously one of the more commonly available rounds. What are we going to compare it to? Anybody who follows my YouTube channel probably saw this coming. The AK, AKM-74, this one uh, is obviously a copy, semi-auto version from Arsenal, the SLR-104 FR. It shoots what is very close to the 5.56 round, 5.45. And uh, open sight iron range is how I will compare these in a future video when we have a little bit of a shoot-off. So, this right here is my favorite rifle. It looks brand new, darn near. This magazine isn't. And uh, it performs beautifully. And um, am I gonna like this uh, this Smith & Wesson better than that? Mm, we'll have to see. I can, I can get 545 pretty doggone cheap. 556 costs me a little bit more. But it's a good comparison. It's basically the M4 configuration that we've seen for a long time going up against the AK-74 configuration, which we've, we've also seen for a long time. If you were going to have a modern day Eastern Bloc versus West conflict, it's going to be these two guns versus each other. So that right there is a lot of, uh, a lot of fodder for folks to talk about. But uh, I'm a big fan of the Smith & Wesson. I think the finish and the fit is awesome. Uh, it performs beautifully and can't wait to uh, to get this out to the range. I pretty much know what it's going to do. It's got a mil spec trigger. One thing that I typically do is replace the trigger with something like a POF drop in. I think this one we're either going to polish it or just shoot it as is. Beautiful, beautiful workmanship. Uh, if you look at uh, the quality of the finish on this rifle, can't be beat. Smith & Wesson does a great job, and for that reason, I find them to be comparable to Colt. <laughs> I know that's probably going to be a controversial statement for some. M&P &P 15 is a brand that uh, has been around now for, gosh, I want to say seven years or so. Um, and they've done they've done a great job. The M and P Sports and the Sporter Two, which are available now, um, they they uh, are basically the same gun. This is a forty one forty barrel. Okay, um, I'm a little bit more of a forty one fifty guy, but to be honest with you, in terms of the kind of shooting I'm ever going to do, I'm not going to melt this gun down, folks. And you won't either. Unless it's something that's your absolute intention and you want to take the time to do mag dump after mag dump and 
so forth and so on. I, I, I tell you there's not a gun out there that you can't, uh, you can't make quit functioning. But we're real happy about this. This particular firearm, uh, as I said, lists over $1,000. You're going to see it pretty much everywhere you look on the net for it. And I'm going to list up the details about the serial number. Uh, you're going to look everywhere on the net. You're going to see this thing going for $800+. Plus. Um, I was able to pick this up from a local gun shop. It's my local gun shop, same one where I got that arsenal a couple of years ago, called the Modern Sportsman. Again, that's the law enforcement version. We really like it. We can't wait to show it to you at the range. Like I said, it's an AR-15. It's shooting 5.56, five, so we pretty much know how it's going to behave. This is DR Drake 63 thanking you today for coming by and uh, watching this. And I can't wait to tell you more about this rifle as we, uh, as we shoot it and discuss its performance. Have a great day. And remember, support the National Rifle Association.